Let's Talk Jinx. A weekly Jinx video we do every Wednesday about anything to do with Jinx, as well as this video acting as a weekly discussion thread on the Jinx subreddit, our League of Jinx. Make sure to go check that out. And now that patch 9.22 is about to hit, the last patch actually of the ranked season as well, we're going to talk about it, changes to 80 carries and things that might affect Jinx, and then something of a pseudo 80 carry tier list to round the video out. Now, one of the first major changes that are going to be happening in the bottom lane that's actually not too Jinx though is Senna. Senna will be arriving, we'll probably talk about her a bit more in depth, like her versus Jinx and stuff like that in next week's episode, but she will be hitting on November 10th, so if you don't know what she does and stuff like that, you're going to want to check that out. It's another champion by August Browning, who was the kit designer for Jinx as a matter of fact, so that will be kind of interesting to see. Ash's W cost is being increased because they kind of want to hit her lane bullying kind of a thing and they wanted to kind of capitalize on like her slow rather than throwing out for the damage of the W. Now in the Jinx Ash matchup, what might change about this is just how more less volley will be coming out because it, let's say about 200 mana, right? And 200 mana on live, that's four volleys. Well now at 200 mana, that's actually going to be less than three though barely, but still only about two volleys that she'll be able to do out. Now granted, she might not be using this as maxing ability and she might not be throwing this all that often anyways, but in case you've been dealing with this as an issue with the Jinx Ash matchup, there you go. Blitz Strength, the Q base damage is actually being decreased because he's kind of still banned a lot by a lot of people relearning the Q range and stuff like that. So if you're playing with a Blitz Crank, the base damage on that's going to be down a little bit. Now granted, if you're playing with a Blitz Crank, maybe that's not all that bad because with the minigun and how much the DPS has, you're kind of making up for that damage. You have Press the Attack or Lethal Tempo or something like that. If you're playing against Blitz Crank, maybe you have that extra second now to maybe flash away, especially because by level 5, the damage is down by 30. We've all had those moments we walked away with 10 health, so they gave us 30 health to possibly walk away from if we're not cc to death so you know kaisa the q missile damage after the first hit is decreased with this one they're kind of trying to hit her late game burst on isolated targets while also allowing you to kind of bully her off of a minion wave and not worry about being harassed by the q also while she's stepping up to last hit minions so again in the jinx kaisa matchup of using rockets to kind of push her off the minion wave and she still wants to stay there to try and get the minions and maybe will harass you back with her q it's going to be doing like five percent less damage to you depending on what the damage is on that ability Callista. The W mark duration and bonus damage on marked targets is increased. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know this was really a thing on Callista, even with the little bit of Callista that I do enjoy playing. Uh, it's basically the Sentinel, and they want to make it so you don't max it last anymore. So in lane, this probably won't make that much of a difference in the Callista and Jinx matchup, because I, I really don't think people are gonna be playing and still putting a lot of points into this anyways. Maybe they'll put one or more points in it before the end of lane phase, but it's probably gonna be the same matchup, which is basically Jinx versus the band champion who's never really played or banned. So there you go. Support Nautilus, our primary base damage. It's, it's actually the primary damage period, no matter what role Nautilus is in, but his our primary base damage will be down now. 50, it looks like, damage at all ranks. So kind of like the Blitzcrank thing, you got a little bit extra time to get out of that now if you need to flash away, but if you're playing with one, the all-in's gonna be a little weaker, so just keep that in mind. Last but not least, uh, Zaya, the other only AD carry played at Worlds next to Kai'Sa. The W bonus attack speed is being decreased. Now, I don't know how many people max W in lane for the Jinx Zaya matchup, but the bonus attack speed is going down. It looks like 5% all the way up to 15% by max rank. So if they are maxing this to trade with you in your minigun, well, it's going to go down for them by 15% at max rank, so about level 9. So there you go. Now to talk about the part of the video you're here for, the pseudo AD carry tier list, where we take the changes and apply them to what we currently see on live and see if we can kind of predict what champions will and will not be good, what might change and what might not change, right? Like for example, if we go to a site like champion.gg, it has Jinx and Jin, Kogma, Caitlyn and Twitch, all champions that actually aren't getting touched this patch as the top 5 AD carries. Ash actually is like right there at number 6 when it comes to win rate and also in positioning. And this might be something that changes her position. She might maybe move down below Misfortune, but especially at this end of year grind, people are gonna be playing the lane bully and stuff like that. But furthermore, because on another site we looked at in the last you know patch videos episode, Ash was always in like the top five actually, depending on the site that you go. So this might actually hurt her like actually a little bit depending on the matchup and kind of keep her either right at number six and lower, or maybe even a little bit lower under Misfortune and stuff like that. Probably won't still really affect the top five. So your top fives, at least according to this site, will still be Jinx, Jin, Kogma, Caitlyn, and Twitch. With the only possible exception being the support changes to Blitzcrank and Nautilus affecting their all-in. So if any of these champions kind of suffer from a weaker all-in, well, that might be an issue, right? Like Jinx has the Flame Chompers with a CC. You're probably going to still lock someone up for 10,000 years. Probably going to still be good. Same with Caitlyn for the Caitlyn Traps. 
Kog'Maw maybe not so much, he doesn't have hard CC. Twitch maybe not so much, he doesn't have hard CC. Jin does have hard CC if he lands his W for example, so he might actually still be there. So Caitlyn might maybe overtake Kog'Maw, but in the top 5 that probably will still be the same. So you probably want to be going for one of these 5 champions. Within the next couple of champions, Ash will actually probably still be good for bullying and lane, especially if you don't really rely on the W for the bullying to begin with. If you rely on maybe more of a hard engaged support, like a Leona or something for the matchup, right? We go down to Kai'Sa and Zaya, who actually are pretty bad on you know solo queue standards, but in pro play, that's part of why they're getting hit. They're probably gonna get a little bit worse, but they're probably gonna still stay like they're gonna stay in the same range of kind of being bad. You probably don't want to pick them anyways, so it is what it is. Meanwhile, if we go to a site like OP.GG, this is what we're talking about. Ash is the number one AD carry, with other AD carries up there being Misfortune, Jinx. Twitch and Draven actually. Heimerdinger is like up there, but I don't know if anyone that's watching this plays Heimerdinger. But like Jin and stuff like that, Caitlyn, they're actually kind of shuffled around a bit in this one. So it kind of varies from site to site. In which case, if Ash is the number one AD carry by almost a full percent, if not more, that W change might actually be somewhat effective with less volleys and stuff like that. So Misfortune might be able to overtake her and might knock Ash down a bit. And then Jinx being in the top three, if you don't count Heimerdinger though as well, this is a Jinx kind of mains video. That's kind of a good sign that Jinx is consistently good across these different sites. So kind of, it's kind of there you have it, right? Like the AD carries are getting nerfed are ones that probably no one are really playing unless you main the champion right now because of how bad they are in solo queue. And it's mainly a pro play focus kind of a nerf. Jinx and stuff like that, they're still good. It's the last path to ranked. Good luck with your climbs and stuff like that. But that's all for this video. So in the comment section, comment within your elo what champions besides Jinx do you think will be some go-tos because it's that end of season grind. Like if Jinx is banned, are you someone that also plays other August champions? And you're like, okay, well then Jin's my go-to. Let's go to this lethality build that uh, Grandmaster's Jin player I keep a taco has been talking about for about a month now actually, and it's actually pretty legit. Or, or are you someone that actually does play Ash? Ash is like your go-to after Jinx. If Jinx is gone and Ash is now nerfed, you gotta look for like another one. Whatever that is, put that in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next, because I think I have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching, and enjoy pizza responsibly.